Hello everyone, my name is Nafil Yasin and today I'm going to talk about AROCA, Scalable Runtime Verification of Shardable Network Systems. This work is in collaboration of Microsoft and UPenn. In clouds like Azure, network functions are becoming emerging bottleneck to correctness and availability. This is because most of the external traffic goes through one or more network functions before reaching any server in the cloud. These network functions are written custom to data center requirements and validating these systems remain difficult due to their complex, stateful time and distributed behaviors. Let me start with an example of what a typical large scale network system looks like. NAT Gateway is one of the Azure's internal network function. It is a combination of network address translator and the load balancer. It is entirely implemented at the software layer for ease of deployment to any virtual machine. NAT gateways are placed between the border routers and the internal servers to distribute the workload among the servers and to translate the public IP address of a service into a local IP address of a server task to handle this request. Let's see how it works at the packet level. The example uses a few NAT gateways. When the packet comes in at the border, it forwards it to the NAT gateway based on the hash of the header. For the first packet that comes in for a flow, NAT gateway installs the entry in its own table and tries to install a next two NAT gateways with a protocol that is similar to, but much weaker than chain replication. If the NAT gateway successfully installs entry on at least one other, it accepts the flow and becomes the primary for the flow. And the other nodes that hold replicated version of the entry are the secondaries. After becoming the primary, the first NAT gateway updates the header for the internal forwarding and sends it to the correct internal server. For all subsequent packets in the flow, NAT gateway updates the header and forwards it to the correct internal server. This is an example of how a NAT gateway would normally work. And together, this distributed infrastructure allows it to handle hundreds of millions of flows in the data center. Now let's see an example of a problem that could potentially arise. Normally, there is ever only one primary in the system. However, if there was ever a case where two NAT gateways were able to become a primary, the system could easily enter inconsistent state, which would result in packet being delivered to the wrong machines, causing not only downtime for services, but also potential security issues. So conceptually simple, these type of bugs and misconfigurations occur regularly in every cloud provider around the world. There are a few ways that operators have tried to deal with this problem thus far. The first is to use traditional monitoring tools like ping, trace route, and packet dumps. These utilities are simple to use and can catch many bugs, but they're also very low level and sometimes expensive to run. As such, while they're useful for detecting end-to-end -end problems like connectivity issues, you find the insight into the internals of a system and the correctness properties can be helpful in quickly diagnosing the problems. Another approach is to use static verification. While people have had great success in applying static verification to single machine programs, distributed systems, and even some network functions, applying static verification to large-scale network functions like NAT Gateway encounter some fundamental problems that are not easily addressed by existing approaches. Our approach is to use runtime verification. Runtime verification can test the control flow, workloads, and the deployed systems implementation. They do not require handwritten models. People have tried runtime verification in the past, but there are many challenges this needs to be dealt with. First, we need to reason about the coordination between events at different locations. In our example, we had to reason about events at different NAT gateways. Second, we need a way to efficiently aggregate global state after each individual event. In our example, we must collect events from all NAT gateways at a single place. Third, the verifier should scale sublinearly with the size of the network functions. What I mean is there are many NAT gateways in Azure, so we need more than a single verifier to verify the system. Verifiers should not do the same amount of work as the network functions, so the required number of verifiers should grow slower than the number of NAT gateways. To resolve the challenges, we design our language of writing invariance to explicitly reason about coordination among events. We design logically centralized verifier to aggregate all the global state. Finally, we use the stream processing framework 
for scaling and fault tolerance. With the challenges in mind, I present Aragog's architecture. Aragog has a language that operators use to specify invariants and install them to the logically central runtime verifier. Netro functions has local verifier that check for local invariants and suppress messages not needed for global verifier. Local verifier sends the remaining messages to the message brokers that forwards the messages to the global verifier to check for distributed invariant violations. Global runtime verifier raises alerts when violations are detected. For the rest of the talk, first I'm going to revisit the violation example of NAT gateway. Then I will show how we can specify the invariant violation and how do we compile the specification to finite automata. Then I will cover the runtime system. And finally, the implementation and evaluation of Aragog. Okay, so let's dive deeper into the problem. I introduced at the beginning of this talk where we had two primaries thinking they are in control at the same time. We can distill this problematic scenario down to two necessary and sufficient conditions. The global system is in a bad state exactly when one, a node installs an entry for a given flow and later another node installs an entry where both of them think they are the primary. Two, the first one does not remove the entry between those two installations. If both of these conditions hold, we have a violation of an invariant. If either, either of them do not hold, there is no violation. Aragog provides a simple language to specify invariant violations. We write the sequence of events in regular expression style. Each event contains the fields to match and the location. We write the location as a variable, so the matching is not tied to a specific location. Once we have the event sequence to match, we create symbolic finite automata from it. There are a few things that distinguish our automata from traditional finite automata. This is a symbolic finite automata in which the transitions are given by a Boolean algebra. It includes the transitions with variables and timings. The SFA is strictly more expressive than the traditional finite automata. For, for, for more details, please refer to the paper. In this example, S represents the start state and the state with double lines represents the final state. If the state machine reaches the final state, it means the sequence of events have occurred and the violation should be raised. As I do not want the viewers to focus on the specific example, I'm going to hide the details of this specific state machine and instead I will use a dummy state machine. The S node represents the start state and the red state represents the final state. That means the violation has occurred. Next, we determinize the SFA to form a DSFA, which is the deterministic SFA. The DSFA is what we use in our runtime verifier. The DSFA in principle is sufficient to catch bugs. Natural function send the flow events to the state machine, which updates the state according to the events received. If it reaches the final state, it raises a violation. However, as there are many flows in the data center, it leads to high bandwidth consumption and one server cannot handle events from all the nitro functions. Therefore, we make the following optimizations. First is filtering. It allows us to focus only on relevant events and save both CPU and bandwidth. Second is sharding. It allows us to separate our events for different flows. We can verify invariants for different flows on different servers. Therefore, we can increase the number of servers without sacrificing performance. Third, if an event is not going to change the state in the final automata, we suppress that event. These optimizations take advantages of properties that are specific or, or in common network functions. I'm going to go in detail how an operator can specify a filter, how to shard, and how we suppress events. Let's start with filtering. With filtering, we can remove the unwanted events being sent to the verifier. In the example here, we remove all the messages of orange color. To specify what kind of messages to filter, we add the filter keyword in our specification language. Here was our initial match expression. Azure Net Gateway has many type of events, but this invariant only need two type of events. Filter restrict to allow only these two type of events. 
Our second optimization is sharding. Sharding allow us to separate check invariant for each flow. Sharding enable us to distribute the state machines to multiple servers. There's a separate state machine for a flow and invariant. We can place many state machines in a single server, but handling all the flows of the data center at a single server is not possible. So we make it easy to add more servers if necessary. Operators can specify the fields to shard on using the group by keyword. Generally, flows are identified by the five tuple. In this example, we use the same five tuple. However, operators can shard events on any header field they require. Our third optimization is suppressing events by having a local verifier alongside the network function. The suppression further reduces the number of events we send to the global runtime verifier. The transitions in DSFA that can be suppressed are marked by orange arrows. The suppressed transitions have no impact on detection of the violation. The two self loops are trivially suppressible because they don't change the state. Some other transitions are suppressible specifically when omitting the transition I still mean the state machines need to see the same sequence of transitions in order to reach the final state. In this dummy example, the transitions from the start state to the middle state and the transition from the final state to the middle state are same that allow us to suppress the transitions from the final state to the start state. Once we have the state machine with suppressed events, we then take the DSFA and create the local DSFA for each location. It allows us to check the invariance directly at the network function machine and hide events when it can prove they would otherwise be processed by a suppressible transition in the in global machine. Once we have the DSFA and the local DSFA, they form the local and global verifier in our runtime system. After the optimizations, we have a runtime system. We have the network functions that also run the local verifier that filters and suppresses the events not needed for invariance. The local verifier sends the events to message brokers that allow us to distribute the events to the correct global verifier. The global DSFA are placed separately as they need events from multiple network functions to check for global invariance. The global verifier raises alerts if any violation has occurred. Let's come to the implementation. To generate the SFA, we use symbolic automata and Z3 library. Antler is used to parse the invariance specification. Our verifier also use handler to parse the SFA. Local verifier use CPP Kafka library to output the events to message broker. For our global verifier, we use Apache Fling as it allows us to scale up and provide fault tolerance. Apache Kafka is used as message broker that allow us to distribute the workload to multiple global verifiers. For our evaluation, we take two traces of NAT gateway from Azure Cloud. The two traces have more than 32 million events. They are taken before and after a bug came in. We verify eight invariants for the NAT gateway. For the live traffic evaluation, we deploy Aragog alongside a distributed firewall. We run the traffic based on DCTCP traffic distribution for multiple 10 minute runs. We check for three invariants in the distributed firewall. Now let's go in the details for evaluation of verification of each network function. First is the NAT gateway. Here are eight invariants for the NAT gateway. Primary single is the example invariant I gave earlier. The detailed description of each invariant is in the paper. As you can see, we need less than 15 lines to specify each invariant violation. In the NAT gateway traces, we were able to find many violations. This table shows the number of times we observe violations of each invariant in a real world traffic trace. In other words, this is the number of times we reached a final state in the corresponding DSFA on the global verifier. We show the numbers for two different checkpoints of the code base, one before a bug is introduced and one after. Common between the two versions are violations for mostly one invariant, same consensus, which track whether flows are closed properly. Some violations here are actually expected as the system is designed to be eventually consistent. And as long as the number is not too high, the system can tolerate these inconsistencies. We note that this is a useful feature of Aragog and runtime verification, that it not only tells you whether there's a violation, but also the frequency of the violation and whether it violates the SLO. 
after the bug is introduced, Aragog observes many more violations. I will just talk about one of these, OpenTO, which is the which is the invariant where flows were timing out while it is in the open state. Although we found the same issue once pre-bug, that was again a consequence of eventual consistency. Our operators confirmed to us that alerts were raised for the correct flows, and it took Irog a milliseconds to find the violations, whereas previously it used to take hours. You can find more details in the paper. For NAT gateway traces, we also measured how many events can be processed in the runtime system. We conducted two experiments. In the first experiment, we only had one global verifier and we varied the number of invariants. As each invariant is different, we randomly pick n number of invariants in each run and plot the events process per second. For a single invariant in a single machine, we can go as high as 1 million events. For eight invariants, we can process more than 30,000 events per second. As each invariant is different, the throughput is bottlenecked by the slowest invariant. Therefore, we see the large variation for a small number of invariants as we are picking the invariants randomly. For the second experiment, we kept the number of invariants fixed to eight invariants. We increased the number of machines used by the global verifier. Our implementation allow us to easily scale up to more than 140,000 events per second using four machines. Scaling with multiple servers avoids the bottleneck of CPU and IO. Let's move on to the distributed firewall experiment. We have four firewalls with two primaries and two hot standbys backups. We have an internal network of five nodes. One node is dedicated to the global verifier. Rest of the internal nodes are for traffic. We have four external nodes separated out in two separate networks. We base the traffic between external nodes and the internal nodes on traces provided in DCTCB. The rules for firewall are simple. The internal nodes can communicate with each other and initiate connections to external nodes. External nodes cannot initiate connection to the internal nodes. Firewall nodes are also running the local verifier that allows filter and suppression. Global Verifier is running Apache Kafka and Apache Flink. Kafka is responsible to receive and pipeline the events from all the local verifiers. Flink is running the Global Verifier. For firewall experiments, I present the summary of results. We were able to catch all the violations. The CPU usage at the local verifier was 15% and the local memory usage was only 20 megabytes. At the global verifier, the CPU usage was mostly between 50 and 100% and the memory usage was around 1200 megabytes. The CPU usage is higher at the global verifier as it collects events from all the local verifiers. The memory usage is high because they stayed safe for fault tolerance and scalability. The latency between the violation occurred and the alert raised was around 100 milliseconds. To summarize, there is a need to verify distributed network functions. Aragog is a simple runtime verifier of shardable network system. We have a language to specify invariant violations and we use automata-based verification to check for violations. The code is available on GitHub and for any questions, you can send me an email. Thank you.